Um, I, hopefully you can see me and hear me. We're live, so welcome, welcome everyone. Um, let me get my chat box up so I can see if you guys are saying anything. Hopefully you guys are having a good Monday. Comments, 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 comments. Oh, you guys been commenting already, okay. Laura, I know that. I know that. Good evening, Dorian. Good evening, Laura. Hi, welcome. Sandy Mulanaki. Oh, you guys are talking to each other. That's what I love to see. Heather Lights, welcome. Patricia, welcome. I'm well. Hopefully you are well as well. Concerned Prince. It will start by 4.30. Again, you guys are talking. I've never seen Concerned, Concerned Prince before, so welcome. I'm assuming you're new. Ed the lights, thank you for the super chat. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Ed the lights is saying hello to everyone. Brandon, welcome. Assess, how are you doing? How did your test go? I didn't hear back from you. How did your test go? Hopefully it went all right. Sandy, hi, welcome. Everyone's getting on with their practice. How is everyone getting on with their practice? That's a good question. Very good question. How are you guys doing? For those of you in the Discord, um, thank you for joining. For joining, um, appreciate that. Um, for those of you who haven't joined, why? Um, the link or the invite is in the description at this precise moment. And I will be pulling it in as a pinned comment once YouTube processes this live, once it's done. But those of you in the um, Discord, um, well done for joining, asking the questions. And I done a live session on Wednesday, I think it was. And that was enjoyable. I really, really enjoyed that last Wednesday talking to you guys. Um, and I will do another one, but probably not this week. So I am snowed under with work at this precise moment. So probably the week after, I will make it probably a regular thing where I'll do a live session in there on a Wednesday, just talking with you guys, hanging out with you guys and answering your questions. I'm going to do a live training session in there as well. Um, I'm scheduling that for the next two weeks, but you guys will, anything I do in Discord, it will be announced. So you will get a notification. If you're around, just turn up. Hello, Paul Show. Hopefully you're right. Um, I'm going to do a live session, one of my classroom sessions, which will be documents. I'm going to do documents in the next couple of weeks. And that will last for about 45 minutes to an hour where I discuss all the documentation that you need to know about the theory test in detail. Show you what the classroom people get. Why is it difficult to get a date for a practical? For a practical because of COVID. It's that simple. COVID changed everything and it will, I won't say it will never because things change, but it's not going to change anytime soon. That's the reason why it's difficult to get a test date. Good afternoon, Diane. Hopefully I'm saying this right. <laughs> I love that. Frank, how are you? How have you been? My family's fine. Hopefully you're fine. So how you been, Frank? I use the name of Doran Fink to success. Why did you change it? Because the channel grew a lot quicker than I expected. When the channel was started, I, um, it was just called Fink to success, Fink positive, be successful. That's the, the, the meaning behind that. Um, and I was talking to a few, my mentor who's training me to do all of this and turn it into the Discord, for example, that was from my mentor as well. And they recommended changing it to um, Driving Theory UK because that's what it is, it's everything theory behind driving and it's going to reach a lot more YouTube people because Think Success doesn't really relate to theory training 
that's the reason why it was changed but i did not when i started the channel i did not expect it to be what it is today it was just done to help a few of you guys out um i didn't realize how many of you needed help and it was a recommendation from one of my pupils in the classroom about three years ago to be honest um, but that's the reason why hi abby hopefully you are fine name it good evening to you okay how you doing Alan Sinclair, I'm new, finally catch a live. Welcome, welcome, I'm glad you can catch a live. Patricia, yeah, 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 past 43 out of 15, 53 out of 75. Well done to you and thank you for coming back and letting us know that you've passed. Um, I really, really appreciate that, so well done to you. Again, let me know in the comments, because I'd like to know what you guys next step are. You're gonna to look to book driving lessons, or are you ready to take a driving test? Samuel, hi, welcome. Peckham Love. I'll come back to collect on the promise you made as I have now moved from Southwick on to Cambridge. What promise did I make? You've moved from South East London to Cambridge. Oh, hence the name Peckham. Um, what promise did I make? Let me know. Hi everyone, I passed my ferry test today, thanks for helping. Pass the ferry test again, let me know, well done to you first of all, congratulations in terms of passing. Let me know in the chat whether you're taking, you're gonna take driving lessons or you're looking to book a driving test. So how do I join please? I'm here, I'm new here, so how do I join? If you're talking about the live, you're here, you're live. If you're talking about the Discord channel, Discord server, sorry, um, click on the invite. When this is done, go into the description and click on the invite. It takes you straight into Discord. Okay, couldn't get it. I'm assuming that's a test that you said you couldn't get. Just confirm that, what you couldn't get. LM, uh, hello, hello Dorian, I have my test tomorrow, Tuesday. Um, I feel pretty confident due to your help. Confidence is good, don't get complacent. Um, fingers crossed for you tomorrow, let me know how you get on. If you've got any questions or any concerns, even though you're feeling confident, pull it in the chat, let me answer it now, directly for you. Emmanuel, well done to you, um, passing your test an hour ago and coming back and let me know. Thank you very much, I appreciate that. Again, let me know in the chat what your next steps are. Driving lessons or driving test. And it's paid off. So well done to you, Patricia, appreciate that. Simbarashi. Hello, Dorian, I'm new here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, Lloyd, I did get your email, but trust me, at this point in time, I'm literally snowed under with work. Um, I've flagged it in my emails. I'm due to get back to you. I haven't forgotten you, trust me on that, but I will get back to you. Um, join the Discord. If you haven't already, join the Discord as well because I'm in and out of this, so I can talk to you more direct than um, on the email. But if you don't join, I will definitely um, email you back. But like I said, I am snowed under, which is ridiculous at this precise moment. Safi, um, welcome. And it was nice chatting to you in the Discord on Wednesday. Really appreciate it. My test wasn't good, got 40. All right, okay, I see what you mean where you didn't get it. So you're 10 short and 57, right? They've got the hazard perception nailed, so that's fine. What you need to do is, um, as I always say, go with the categories. Again, if you haven't joined the Discord already, if you have joined the Discord, take a picture, but take out your details. I don't need the driver's number, all the rest of it and just take a picture of your um, categories and I can advise you of the best way to go forwards on that because I need to know what questions you got wrong in what category. So for example, if it was three road signs, 
I can advise you a lot better than I can just doing it over knowing that you got 10 wrong. And that's the advantage of having Discord. I can help you guys more direct. As much as I'm snowed under, snowed under with work, emails, Instagram, it's gonna take me a while to get through that. But Discord, I will be in and out on a daily basis. So I will see your message a lot more um, quicker and I can respond a lot more quicker. I did my fairy test three times and I'm assuming that's fell. Okay, again, you need to go back to basics, work on the categories. Again, for those you guys saying that you are failing your theory test, jump into Discord, you can get more help. And when I do the direct training, you're gonna get a notification rather than the, just the lives. I will still be doing the lives on Monday. A video still gets released on Wednesday, but at some point, not this week, Next week, I'm going to try and be in there live and do a live training session. Oh, well done to you. Got your test on Friday. How are you feeling about your driving test? What part of the country are you taking it? Let me know what part of the country and how you're feeling. Laura's wishing you good luck. Well done to you, Emmanuel. Oh, Simone, I just saw you, hello. Welcome back, I saw you last week. Welcome back, thanks for coming back. Dandy saying thank you. Okay, what I'm gonna do Halavi, I've not seen your name before, so welcome. I'm assuming you're new, unless you've not been commenting. Good evening, Dorian. Thank you for the video. I'm very I did not see your videos before my theory test, and also did not prepare well. I lost my theory test twice. You're in the right place. Again, I will suggest you guys who are failing, jump in Discord, get a direct help from me with that. Welcome, welcome. I'm struggling with road and traffic signs and rules of the road, and that's big categories. Rules on the road, traffic signs, and motorways are the biggest categories on the ferry test. Um, again, join Discord. That's all I'm going to keep saying. Join that. You can get direct help from that. Kenny, God bless you as well and welcome. All right. Um, hello, Emily, how are you? George, V George, is that V George? Just type yes in the chat, let me know. Hope you had a good week. I've just booked my theory test on the 19th of August. I'm going to do an intensive in Norwich and stay in the Airbnb. I passed, I booked my theory test on the 19th of August, which is next month. Sorry, Rhythm, I'm just reading your message. I should say hello to you, by the way, because you're one of the regulars that always turn up. Um, so you got your test book for the 19th. Yeah, are you doing it over... Oh, duh, I can say, are you doing it over here in your country? The um, Yeah, you've got to be doing it over here, 19th. And you're doing intensive in Norwich. When are you doing intensive? Is it straight after the 19th or just before the 19th? Just let me know. Emily, you got your test book for August. Uh, what part of August? Because August is tomorrow. I got my theory test on the 11th. I got 42 of my last test. Any advice? I got my test on the 11th of August. Yes, the advice I would give you is study the categories that you got wrong. If you got 42, that means you got eight questions wrong. 
Start with the categories first and then build it back up from there. You've got the 11th of August, which is next week sometime. The week after next, shall I say. No, what am I talking about? It is next week sometime. So you've got a little bit of time to study. Again, I will keep sending like a parrot. Join Discord and you can get all the help you possibly can in the short space time that you have remaining. Well done for passing. The teaching Zoom. What do you mean by teaching? Uh, do you mean I'm doing it? Am I doing it on Zoom? No. Um, it's going to be done live in Discord. We're just going to one of the study rooms and I will do it live in the study room so everyone can get to it who's available. So it would not be done on Zoom. When I'm doing, I'm going to, I've got a membership class coming out. Again, I have to delay it because I, I haven't got time to sort that out just yet. But when that comes, the classes will be on Zoom on that because they're going to be private because it's members only, and you will get a recording of that as well. But for Discord, when I do training, it will be in there, we just go into one of the study rooms and turn on the cameras and we can have a good conversation and I can teach you what you need to know. Driving test is your next step. Okay. At the moment, reading Highway Code and watching all your videos, you spoke about the app, do you have a link please? The link will be in the description of the videos, not in this, I don't put the link for the apps in this, but it watch, click on any of the videos in, in the past and um, scroll down, it's got the link in there and you just click on that, it takes you straight to iOS or Android, depending on which one you're using. Um, I, <laughs> Reading the highway code, I'm not a big fan of reading the highway codes to study for the theory test because like I said, the highway code is for every road user. As much as I say you do need to know your stuff, it's for every road user. If you use the app, it's got the highway code in the app, on, on the app anyway. So that's why I suggest getting the app in the paid version because you've got the highway code attached to that. But the, um, the app is more lasered focused for the theory test. The highway code is for every single road user, whether you cycle, ride, walk, or drive. So you're better off getting lasered focus and just doing the app. But if you're not an app person, then yeah, do the books. The intensive courses aren't rushed. You go as fast as the pupil can go. Um, it's a lot of information in a short space of time. I will say this, intensive courses isn't for everybody. Um, I teach intensive courses um, and it's not for everyone. If you can't take information in, if you're not a practical person, I would say stay away from intensive courses. But the other way around it is get some driving lessons under your belt first and you go in there with experience. Now that's a different issue. But if you've never driven before, um, that's, I'm shooting my foot self in the foot. I don't believe intensive courses are for someone who's never driven before, unless you're a really quick learner and practical at it. Sandy's asking, is, um, saying she's happy to study with anyone. Again, with the Discord, you guys can go into a study room and study together. You don't need me in there. You can study together, share your screens, whatever it is in there. Um, so you don't need me to study together. I, the reason why Discord was done, so you guys can get together, talk to each other, because you're on the same journey. You're going through the same feelings, same emotions, whether you're passing or failing. There's times when you just feel like you're not getting it. Talk to each other and um, motivate each other to pass this, not just a theory test, also getting your driver's license. That's what the Discord's for. But as I said, I will be in there on a regular basis talking to you guys as well. What name am I supposed to, name of which site? You've got to make things clear. I don't know what site you're talking about. Yeah, Lloyd, just jump in there. Like I said, um, you can send me a direct message in there as well. Um, anything that goes through Discord, because it's new, I will respond as soon as possible. Emails is slightly different because I've I, it, that just gets snowed under with my work email, and work has to come first because that's what pays the bills. Um, so, but I, like I said, with your email, I have flagged it. It's not just gone missing. Um, so I will respond. But if you want to talk in Discord, feel free to jump in there if you haven't already. I don't pass. 50 out of 50. Wow, congratulations to you. Thanks to your videos. The vast majority of my revision watching you doing practice tests. 
Okay, let's work for you. Thank you and keep up the good work. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Again, let me know in the chat what you are doing next. Driving lessons or um, the test. Gone blank then. It's on the invite. Click on, once this finished, don't go now. Watch the live. Um, once the live is finished, it's in the description. I made sure it's in the description. And when YouTube process the video, I'm going to pull it as a pinned comment. So you can go on there and click. If you click on last week's video, it's on there. For the next few weeks, it will be in the description as a pinned comment. You click on the link and it takes you straight into Discord. Most of you are asking how you join. Yeah, it's just click on the link. But like I said, it's attached to this video. Again, it's in the description. Don't need to type it out. And plus it's an invite, it's all numbers and letters. I can't type that out. Um, just click on that, it takes you straight in. West London, I'm excited. This is a great opportunity for me to be able to be independent. That's what driving does. Um, that's what driving does. And it's, from an instructor's point of view, it's a great feeling when you guys actually pass one, the theory test, and two, the driving test. As for me as an instructor, there's no better feeling when you guys come back and um, the examiner says, congratulations. Click on the link, George. Click on the link and you'll jump straight in. London's taken over, it used to be Glasgow. I've got to say to you, George, why are you not working anyway? Oh, you move out of South London now, aren't you? So you can watch the lives. Well, it's nice to see you in there, George. Marcia did tell me that someone made contact with phone, but she wouldn't tell me the name. It should be turned up live, so obviously it was you. But thank you for coming and watching. Appreciate it. I hope you're well and your wife. That's what I try to do is break it down very, very simple, not make it complicated. So I'm glad it worked for you and appreciate it. Right, what I want to do as usual, I'll come back to some of these because you guys are typing quicker than I, than I can read. I <laughs> appreciate that. Um, I just want to, sorry, let's see this one right here. My test tomorrow, Elsie. Um, again, let me know it's AM or PM. Got any questions that you need answered, pull it in the chat. Let me answer it directly to you rather than a bog standard generic answer. And I hope your test goes well for you tomorrow. So as I normally do, I do an overview of the theory test because I never assume you guys know how the theory test works because we're always getting new people joining on a regular basis. So it's 50 questions, it's multiple choice. And you have 57 minutes to do those questions. You need to get 43 out of 50 to pass it. I always say, if you have to take the 57 minutes, take the 57 minutes. But if you studied really well, you won't get anywhere near the 57 minutes. But if you have to do it, do it. It's not a problem. Once you've done that, you click end, you move on to the hazard perception. And there's 14 videos. 13 of them have single hazard score, a maximum of five. And one of them's got a double hazard, says so two fives. I'm going to do a hazard perception a little bit later on live. Because um, again, you guys are asking me for that. And some of you are still struggling with that. I have got a video that went deep dive into the hazard perception. But you guys are still struggling. So we will do a hazard perception a little bit later on. And you need to get 44 out of 75. Your average has to be free across the board with your hazard perception. If your average is below free, then you are going to fail it. That's just fact. Um, there's no trick questions. Again, that came up in the classroom this morning. There's no trick questions. It's just written badly worded badly. So read the questions very carefully. Read the answers very carefully. And you'll probably see when we do a mock test in a minute um, what I'm talking about. Um, the theory test is black and white. They're looking for safety options always. Um, it's either going to be safe or it isn't. On the driving test, there's gray areas. You've got to turn that gray area on the driving test into safety. But on the theory test, it's always black and white. 
safe or it isn't you're looking for the safe options and whatever answers they give you it's always going to be safe to do that particular answer as well um, and if it's not safe outcome then you're looking for a controlled outcome and that's normally to do with your um, first aid and most motorway questions um, a controlled outcome in doing that and last but not least don't overthink it um, the driving like I said the ferry test is very basic very simple do not start to overthink it if they give you a question it's got abc as information that's all they're giving you that's all you need to work with this morning i had a question and he came out with but yeah if it's raining this and it was raining that where are you getting this information from it doesn't say nothing about raining the question obviously chose the wrong answer it's like i said if the question is abcd that's the information they gave you that's the information you're dealing with do not add anything in do not take anything out and the most important thing about the ferry test, do not make it personal. The ferry test isn't about you, it's generic across the country, so it has to be a generic answer. So once you make the question personal, you're looking for an answer that's personal to you, the chances are it's going to be wrong. So that's the overview of the ferry test. So I'm going to do um, a 20 question mock test. Yeah. I <laughs> Like I said, I'm not a big fan of doing, unless you're doing the road signs from the highway code, because obviously you couldn't go in the highway code and do road signs. But um, I would always go down the app, because as I said, the app is lasered focused for you to pass the theory test. And if you're getting the driving test success app um, or the DBSA one, it's got the highway code attached to it anyway. I, I'm getting beeps all the way through. So some of you are joining Discord right now as well. So welcome in the Discord. Um, good afternoon, sir. Thank you so much for teaching. I passed my well done to you in terms of passing again. Let me know in the chat whether um, you're going driving lessons or the driving test route. Ferry Test Pro and the videos have been great. Ferry Test Pro is a decent app. I just find it clunky. Um, but like I said, that's the, driving test success is what I use. I'm not saying it's the best, it's what I use. That's what I get most success with. But to be honest, all the apps are pretty much the same. Um, I just need ease of use for the classroom because obviously if I've got five, six students all using it, I need ease. I don't want someone coming to me, well, how do you get to this? How do you get to that? Driving test access is pretty much straightforward and very simple. I assess, you mean, I mean people. I'm assuming you guys are just having a conversation amongst yourselves you say you work so do you do something else other than being a driving instructor no as a driving instructor i'm talking about work when i say work i'm i am building a, right let me try to explain um i'm a driving instructor that's my first and foremost job i teach i do intensive courses we do theory in the morning if they need it for two hours and then we go out driving for four hours but i run my own branch which is in luton I am covering for somebody else in North London because we've got another branch in North London and we are looking to open up more branches around Luton. So I am busy trying to do all of that and put that in place. That's why I'm snug under with work. That's what I mean. So it's outside of this stuff that I'm doing and that's what I mean by work um, because we are building more centres around the country. But unfortunately for me, I've got to help build it. But I'm still trying to do the YouTube. I don't want to stop doing this because obviously you guys still need the help. Well done for passing. Well done, well done, well done. I'm always proud of you guys. Whether you pass or fail, it's just being brave enough to go and take it. Um, as I said before, passing the theory test is nice and that's your ultimate aim. But having the guts to go and take it, it's still, whether you pass or fail it, it's still worth doing and then you've got to pat yourself on the back for doing it. Remember, you learn from mistakes. It's not always about passing. 42 out of 50, 61. Um, again, eight questions wrong. I would definitely um, look at the categories, but again, I will say jump in onto Discord and get direct help. For those of you who are failing, let me just quickly explain before we jump onto the mock test, otherwise I could be going through your comments all day. When you, if you are failing, there's a, well, let me go back. Discord, 
when you go in there, there's two um, rooms, not rooms, but two text um, stations. One's for passing, one's for failing. If you pass, don't be afraid to go in there and say, look, I've passed, blah, blah, blah. Put your um, comments in there, whatever you want to put in the pass room. If you failed it, you can go in there and say that you failed it, put the numbers up. But if you put a picture up, of the certificate, not certificate, of the questions you got wrong. I don't need the personal details. So blank that out. All I need is the section that you got the questions wrong. I can now come back to you directly and give you a plan of action. But when you tell me you got 42, I don't know what eight questions you got wrong. You may have got six road signs. But if I can see it, I can now give you a plan of action that's detailed to you and you personally. That's the advantage of Discord. So post your picture in there and I can see it and I can comment. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Right, I'm gonna um, start the mock test and I'm gonna come up with, come back to some of these chats otherwise we'll never get started. And I appreciate you guys' time so I don't wanna take up too much of your time. So screen share. Right, so for those of you that are new, the way this works, we read the question first and then you go through the answers. This is A. So let me read the question. What circumstances require you to notify the driver and vehicle license agency, otherwise known as a DVLA? Um, and A, when your health affects your driving. B, when your vehicle needs an MOT certificate. C, when you have to work abroad. And D, when you lend your vehicle to someone. So do put A, B, C or D in the chat. So that's how that works. Not a problem, George. Well, you got my number, so or Marcy's number, you got direct access to me, so you're luckier than most. The link is in the description at this point in time. And it says Discord in the link. And it's got some numbers and letters after it. Can't miss it. It's actually said to click on the link next to it as well. I'll type that in. Well done for passing. Congratulations. Again, let me know in the chat if you are taking lessons or going to take lessons or um, book a driving test. Hello, Denise. Welcome. Yes, it is a lot of information because it's for every single road user. Like I said, it's for walking, driving, horse riding, for every single road user. So that's the reason why I would not personally suggest unless you're taking bits and pieces out of it, i.e. road signs or road markings. But that's, the app has it attached to it anyway. Right, so let me just see what you guys are putting. I've got A, A, and most of you are going for A's. Oh, Nana, welcome. Nice to see you here. Hope you are well. Right, most of you are going for A's. You're, yeah, the only time you need to contact them is when your health changes or a change of address. That's the two options they can give you. In this case, obviously, it's your health has changed. You need to notify them because if your health changes, they may put restrictions on your license or revoke your license, depending on how bad the health issue is. What should you do to reduce the risk of your vehicle catching fire? What should you do? Check out any strong smell of fuel. Use fuel additives. Avoid driving with a full tank of fuel and keep water levels above maximum. Oh, so that's well done to you. 48 out of 50 is a high score and 69 out of 75. Well done for passing. So you're now on to what? The driving lessons or booking a driving test? Um... Oh, so you started driving lessons. Well done. 
fisherman flat i saw your email um as i've been saying um during the live i haven't got i've read it i flagged it but i haven't got time to respond to it if you want a quicker response join discord send me a message in there I'm in mean, Lincolnshire, would be great for a centre here. Um, that's, well, I'm not going to be setting up anything in Lincolnshire, that's for sure, but it's going to be around where I am. Yeah, but take, I'll take note of that. We'll do the research and mark it. Right, let's see what you guys are going for. Right, I've got D, D. Got to be A's from the last question. Right, most of you are going for D's. The answer, keep water levels above maximum. No, it's not gonna be that. Right, Mercy, welcome. Oops, put you on the wrong screen there. Simone Jackson, right, I said A's and D's. Let me just tackle the D's first and foremost. D, keep water levels above maximum. It's going to be, no, you can't keep your levels above maximum. It's dangerous. That's why it's called maximum. So you're saying keep your levels above maximum. That can't be safe. It's check out any strong smell of fuel. That's what it's going to be. It's the same way that you will, if you smell gas in your house, you'll be trying to find out where that gas leak is coming from. So if you smell a strong smell of your car or fuel, you need to find out where it's coming from. So check it out. That's the answer. You want to put a rear facing baby seat on the front passenger seat. What must you do if the passenger seat is protected by a frontal airbag? That's a mouthful. Deactivate the airbag. Put the child in an adult seat. Put the child in an adult seat belt. Turn the seat to face sideways and ask the passenger to hold the baby. And which ones you guys are going to form? I'm still trying to keep up with your chat, guys. Charles, I've seen it. Really helps you, sir. Pass my fair test. Congratulations, Charles. Thank you so much for helping humanity. <laughs> helping with humanity. It's a bit strong, but thank you for the kind words. I appreciate that. Let me know in the chat again. I'd like to know what you guys' next steps are. Taking driving lessons or booking a driving test. I think I'm all caught up on that, so let's take a look. Right, someone's got definitely A, so they're, oops, really confident. Let's make that bigger. Kim, Kim. Not seen your name before, so hopefully um, you're new. Welcome. Caroline's got a, again, difference of opinion. Rhythm's got A. Harry's got A, Sandy's put numbers, three A in there. Right, let me deal with the difference of opinion. B, put a child in an adult seatbelt. The question you've got to ask yourself is why it's a child? Why would you put a child in an adult seatbelt? And it's a baby, it's not a child either, it's a baby. It's deactivate the airbag, turn off the airbag. So cause just in case it goes off accidentally, it may cause a suffocation for the child. Um, let me just make a quick comment. I just want to see if I can find it. Do, 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 do. Fisherman Flower. Your email that you sent me, I'm not going to say what you got, but the email you sent me, you put B for this. I'm just, all I'm going to say is you need to study a little bit more because the amount of questions you got wrong, you should not be getting that many questions wrong when you're going for a real test. I would suggest that you join Discord and I can help you improve your score because you asked me for help in the email. Like I said, I did read it, but for me to help you, it's going to have to be a direct access. I can't help you over email with the amount of questions you got wrong. And with the questions you're answering, it shows a lack of weakness there with the lack of knowledge. So if you want my help, join Discord and I can help you a lot more and a lot quicker. So I just want to make that comment for you. Um, Sorry, let's move on to the next question. You're driving past, you're right. 
You're driving past parked cars. What should you do if you see a bicycle wheel sticking out between cars? Slow down and be prepared to stop for, the cycle, for a cyclist. Accelerate past quickly and sound your horn. Slow down and wave the cyclist across. Brake sharply and flash your headlights. Oh, I'm with you. Okay. Well, thank you for joining and thank you for watching. Hopefully you're getting some benefit from that. And again, I would suggest like a parrot, join Discord because you can get more help, more direct. And the videos and the lives only go so much. Um, so if you want more help, jump in Discord. There's like-minded people. All you guys watching this are in there and you can help each other out as well. Not a problem, fisherman. Um, hopefully that helps. But like I said, I don't want to disclose what you got because it's not right. But like I said, I know from what I saw and I thought you need a lot more help than I can give you via email. So hopefully that helps you out. And we'll meet up in Discord if you've joined. Right, so let me just catch up with this. Right, I see a lots of A's on this. Right, see, most of you are going for A's. Slow down. Yeah, slow down. Be prepared to stop for a cyclist. You're not in a rush on your driving test either, so that's not going to be a problem or shouldn't be a problem. Oh, this is a long one. You, can you guys see that? Yep. You have to make an unexpected journey. You're carrying a five-year-old child on the back seat of your car. They're under 1.35 meters, four feet, five inches tall. How should you seat them if a correct child restraint isn't available? Sharing a seatbelt with an adult, between two other children, behind the passenger seat, using an adult seatbelt. Um, I think I'm caught up with the chat. Right, so. Oh, that's massive. Let's change that. The mouse is playing up. Try again. Teresa, I'm not seeing your name before, I don't believe, but welcome. Appreciate you. Right. D. Simone D, most of you going for D's. Right, most of you going for D's. And the answer is, yeah, use an adult seatbelt. Um, sharing a seatbelt, that's not safe, obviously. And you may not have another adult with you. Between two other children, you may not have two other children with you. Behind the passenger seat, it makes no difference whether they sit with it behind you or behind the driver. Um, but it's going to use an adult seat, but something is better than nothing. So if you haven't got a child restraint, use an adult seat belt. At an incident, a casualty is unconscious but breathing. When should you move them? At an incident, a casualty is unconscious but breathing. When should you move them? Right. When an ambulance is on its way, when there's a risk of further danger, when, bystand when bystanders offer to help you, when bystanders tell you to move them. Came late, I've got my test tomorrow, 9 a.m., morning test. Well, fingers crossed it goes well for you. Again, if you've got any questions, um, put it in the chat, let me clear that up for you now. Adi Leakey. Uh, thanks to um, Doris. <laughs> I've been called some things in my time. Um, I passed my theory test at the first attempt. Scored 49. That's really high. Well done to you. And 68 in hazard perception. Not a problem. I'm glad that you passed it. So well done. And thank you for coming back and letting me know. Again, please in the chat, let me know if you are taking, are going to take driving lessons or book a driving test. Sandy has gone for five. Well, that's the last one. I got five A. Sorry, Sandy. Just I'm well behind with that. So let me see what you guys have put for this one. 
Right, it looks like a difference of opinion here. I've got B and I've got an A. Um, B's. And I've got B's. Where's the code for the danger? Risk of further danger, Lee D, I've never seen your name before, so welcome as well. Risk of further danger is B. It's gonna be that one. You only move them if there's risk of further danger. Um, otherwise, leave them there, because by moving someone unnecessarily, you can cause them more harm than good that you can't see. And that's the reason why the answer is that one. When may you, when may you drive a car in this bus lane? So I always say, read the question first, Look at the images, get your clues from that, because sometimes some golden nuggets in that, and then you look at the answers. So when may you drive a car in this bus lane? Uh, Monday to Friday, 7 till 10, 4 to 6.30 p.m. You may not use it at any time to get to the front of a traffic queue outside its hours of operation to overtake slow moving traffic. Sandy's gone for, oops, mouse is really playing up. Let's go get that down. Let's try again. Right, um, Sandy's gone for C. C. C, most of you have gone for C's. And Kem's gone for... C's, right, mostly if you've gone for C's, other than, right, I see all C's. Um, outside of his hours, yeah, so technically, uh, Monday to Friday, 7 to 10, depends how you want to read it. 7 to 10 is when you can't use it or can use it outside of 10 a.m. If you was on your driving lesson, the examiner expects you to drive in the bus lane if your test was after 10 a.m., but before 4 p.m., because it's a bog standard left-hand lane for those of you taking driving lessons. What does this sign mean? Again, a red circle, one diagonal line. Always look at the image. Waiting permitted, clear way, no stopping. National speed limit applies and waiting restrictions apply. Can you explain about traffic lights order? Which one can, which one? I'm assuming you say come next after green and also after red. After green is steady amber. And after red is red and amber. Um, I've got a video on the channel that explains it really in detail um, three, four weeks ago. So if you look at that one um, and that will explain the traffic lights in detail, all the crossings in fact, in detail. D, D, Sandy's gone for B, question mark. I'm assuming the question mark, you're not sure. Right, so most of you have gone for D's. Sandy had a question mark. Let me just see what B is. B is clear way, no stopping. No stopping, Sandy, would be the X. So there'd be another diagonal line going across. Let me see if I can do it with this. Uh, so there would be like another um, line going across. So there'd be a red X. That would be no stopping on the clear way. This is a restriction. And the restriction is you can drop off and pick up your passengers, but you can't wait. So you drop them off, move on, pick them up, move on. But you cannot wait for them. That's the difference between the two. Hopefully that helps. Right, um, what did I say it was? Restrictions. 
What should you do when you're passing loose sheep on the road? Briefly sound your horn, go very slowly, herd them to the side of the road, pass quickly but quietly. First time joining the group, um, but I really like the way you teach. Thank you, appreciate that. Um, it's nice to know that, um, that I'm doing it right. <laughs> so I fully appreciate that, thank you. Right, got B, B's. Denise has gone for B, Teresa B, Sandy. Gone for B, Lynn. Welcome, B. So most of you have gone for B's. Again, Nita's gone through the back door, me. Safi, um, B as well. Most of you gone for B. Yes, yeah, B, it's obvious. Um, just go slowly and be prepared to stop if you have to. Which vehicle might have to take a different course from the normal, from normal at a run back? God, oh, this lecture keep getting badly. Right, read that again. Which vehicle might have to take a different course from normal at a roundabout? Long vehicle, van, estate car, sports car. I love that. Slowly, nobody wants angry sheep in the road. <laughs> I love that, Lee. Right. A. A. Again, most of you have gone for A. Porsche, I've just seen your answer. You're, you're way behind. You've got 8D. We're on 10. I've just literally seen your answer come through now. Um, that's A. Yeah, it's a long vehicle. Lorries have to take a different route to a car. So that's the reason why the answer is what it is. Which road user has cause and hazards? So which road user? So again, look at the image first and then go from there. So which one has caused the hazard? The car turning arrow D, the moving car arrow C, the pedestrian went to cross arrow B, the parked car arrow A. Right, let's see what you guys are going for. Mm, this is interesting, you guys are going for, right, rhythm, D. I've gone A. Sandy's gone for D. A, 11A, A. Right, some, whoa, lots of you gone for A's. Right, so A is, that, sorry, A is the correct answer. Threw me there, it's the ones going for D's that's surprising me. Why are you going for D? What's D? Car, this is D in the distance, cars turning, right, the car turning, the car turning, Arrow D, that's D, the distance, let me just blow that up. That's D. The guy's parked on the zigzags, you can't park on a zigzag, that's why it's a hazard. It's also on the pavement. But the main thing is there, if you look, let me blow it up again so if you can see it, it's on zigzags, you cannot park on zigzags, you must not overtake within zigzags. That's why it's A, that's dangerous. What will happen if you follow this vehicle too closely? So again, look at the image, lorry. Your brakes will, over, your brakes will overheat. Your view ahead will be reduced. Your engine will overheat. Your fuel consumption will be increased. I 
I will accept your explanation. I will accept it. Again, some of you are saying that as well. I'll be confused with the arrows making like all the questions. So D would be be confused as arrow A. I again accept it, but remember your take if you go for the real test, you can't get confused in there. Uh right, what are we going for? B. B. Maria Ma. I've not seen your name before, so I'm assuming you're new as well, so welcome. And B, right, most of you go for B, is it? Yeah, your view's going to be restricted. I've always say this when this one comes up. As I say, if you can't see my wheel mirrors, I can't see you. It's true. So when you're taking driving lessons, driving behind lorries and buses, <clears throat> make sure you can see their wing mirrors, then you're going to be able to see the road ahead as well. So it's going to be that one. A police car is following you. What should you do if a police officer flashes the headlights and points to the left? So what should you do? Stop immediately. Move over to the left. Pull up on the left. Turn left at the next junction. Right, some of you are behind with your internet because I'm literally seeing your answers coming through now. Literally popped up 12B. Caroline as well. Literally 12B, your guys are coming through now and I've got people answering question 13 now. So your internet connection um, is way behind. Right. C. C, not B. C. I've got A, that's the difference of opinion. A and C's. So most of you have gone for C's. Let's see if I see any more. Oh, I've got a D here as well. So I've got A, D and C. All right, let's take a look at what's what. A, stop immediately. That can't be safe because you're stopping immediately. Remember the first is about safety. So stopping the immediate suggestion, stopping just like that, they're going to go into the back of you. Um, what was the other one? D, turn left at the next junction. No, it's move over to the left and it will be move over to the left when safe to do so. Um, let me just read that question again and break it down for you. Police cars following you. They're following you. What should you do if the police officer flashes the headlights and points to the left? They're flashing the headlights to let you know it's you they want and they're pointing to the left to say, move to the left when safe to do so. That's what that one's about. But yeah, stop immediately is the common answer, but stopping immediately, you're just suggesting that you're going to take the brakes and just stop. Oops, I clicked the wrong one by mistake. That's talking and trying to multitask. Um, what hazards should you be especially aware of if you're turning left into a side road? So again, breaking it down, what hazard should you be especially aware of if you're turning left into a side road? Traffic congestion, pedestrians, parked vehicles, one-way street. <laughs> not if you want to keep your license, Patricia. <laughs> not if you want to keep it. So this is what I'm talking about. This has just come through J. A little torn between C and D. Right. What hazards should you be aware of? Right, so Harriet's gone for B, Kate, B, Sandy, B, 
bees. So mostly bees. Let me see if I see a difference of opinion. I've got a D here. I'm not sure if it's related to the last question or this question, but it's a D. And most of you have gone for B. It is B. The key word here is especially pedestrians are moving targets. Traffic congestion, if it's congestion, the traffic is slow or not moving. So you'd have to be aware of it. Parked vehicles is parked, it's not moving. And a one way street, you don't need to be particularly aware of that. Pedestrians are moving targets. You don't know how they're going to behave, especially children. That's why that is what it is. Following a collision, a person has been injured. What would be a warning sign of sh for shock? Slow pulse, rapid shallow breathing, warm dry skin, flushed complexion. <laughs> Definitely can't be knocking people down. Right, I've got B. B. Mercy's gone for B. Right, my, again, most of you have gone for B. Let me just see if I'd see a difference of opinion. I think you've got dodgy keyboards, Laura. Um, I saw a different one here just a minute ago. Antoinette, you've gone for A, slow post. It's not going to be a slow post. Um, for someone who's going to shock his rapid, shallow breathing is going to be the correct answer on that. When would you use an emergency refuge area on a smart motorway? When would you? If you think, you'll be, if you think you will be involved in a road rage incident, in case of emergencies or breakdown, to stop and check where you are, to make a private phone call. I can't remember what question 13 was, Caroline. B, right, most of you have gone for Bs. Again, let me look for a difference of opinion on this. I've got a C on here. I'll deal with that in a minute. Fisherman, you've got a C as well. Not the same one. My mouse is really playing up. Right, I've got a B. Right, okay, most of you have gone for Bs. Please, it's better to learn driving is automatic. A, B, I'll come to that in a second. I've got Ds. Right, I've got Bs and Ds. Well, there's a lot of you. Right, it is B, it's an emergency. The only time you can go in the hard shoulder or a refuge area is an emergency. And again, look for golden nuggets in the question. That's why I say, read the question carefully. When would you use an emergency? Refuge. Answer. In case of emergency, there's a link. Like I say in my videos, it doesn't always work, but you have to shortlist it as a possible. It's got emergency in the question, got emergency in the answer. It makes sense. So that's the reason why you go for that one. You arrive at an incident, there's no danger from fire or further collision and emergency services have been called. What's your first priority when attending to an unconscious motorcyclist? Again, a mouthful. Check whether they have any broken bones. Check whether they are breathing normally. Check whether they're bleeding. Check whether they have any bruising. A, B, please, is it better to learn driving with automatic or manual? 
That question I cannot answer. That's a personal thing. You have to decide whether it's right for you in terms of learning automatic or manual. Um, so I can't answer that, unfortunately. The only advice I would give you is try both. Take driving lessons in the manual, take driving lessons in the automatic, and then see how you feel with it. But that I can't advise you on. Right. B, B, and again, most of you are going for Bs. Let me just see if there's a difference of opinion. Rhythm's got a B as well. Henry, I've not seen your name before, so welcome. Most of you have gone for Bs. There's no different answers than that. Yeah, it's going to be B. First thing you're going to do is check to make sure they're breathing normally. Um, otherwise, you're going to have to attend to them with first aid. Oh, this is interesting. You're approaching a junction. Make sure you can see that. You're approaching a junction where the traffic lights aren't working. What should you do when a police officer gives you this signal? Stop at the stop line. Turn left only, turn right only, continue ahead only. No, it's not. I don't remember what 30. Once it's clicked, I, I can't go back to it. So I have no way. The only way you're going to know that is watch the replay. Fast forward to a 13. So unfortunately, I can't tell you what the answer is because um, I can't get back to it. Right, we have A. A. Again, most of you are going for A's. Um, police car flashing. Well, if it's, the, if it's the police car flashing, it was moved to the left. If that was the question, it was moved to the left. I've got difference of opinion on this one. I've got A, I've got a B, and I've got a C. So we're talking about A, C, and B. A, B, and C. B is not turn left only. And was the other one C and turn right only? No, it's stop at the stop line. A little tip for you guys. If you get a flat palm like you've got here or a flat back hand as an image, it is stop. She's saying stop. If you drove past her with her hands in that position, you're gonna get three points on your license because you've just technically gone for a red light. So a flat palm, flat back hand means stop. You're driving at night, so it's night time. What should you do if you're dazzled by a vehicle behind you? Brake sharply to a stop. Set your mirror to dazzle the other driver. Switch your rear lights on and off. Set your mirror to be to the anti-dazzle position. So let's see what you guys are going for. Right, I'm assuming. Um, I've got D. I've got difference of opinion there. I've got a B, so I've got D's and I've got a 19D, so it's a D. Oh, God, this mouse is doing my head in. And I've got these. Right, so D, D, D. And I had the C there somewhere. And a B. Right. B, for, well, let me read the question again and breaking it down for you guys. You're driving at night, so it's night time. What should you do if you're dazzled? If you didn't know, dazzled means temporary blindness in terms of driving. So temporary blindness, loss of eyesight. Um, by a vehicle behind you. So the vehicle is behind you. 
If you went for B, set your mirror to dazzle the other driver. That can't be safe. You're dazzling them. So two of you can't see clearly. It's going to be D, set your mirror to an anti-dazzle position. The anti-dazzle is just changing the angle of the mirror. It just kills the bright light from the car behind. You can still see the shape of the car, but the bright light is not as bright when you set your mirror to the anti-dazzle position. So that's going to be D. What does this sign mean? Again, look at the images or the image and in right hand lane for buses only. Right hand lane ahead is narrow. Right hand lane for turning right. Right hand lane is closed. Typed it all out, Kadu. Again, I've sent your name before, so welcome to you. Right, D, got D's all along. Lee, I don't know what number or letter that's supposed to be. Anybody got A, B, C or D? And most of you are going for D's. It's got it's right hand lane closed, yeah. Left lane the left lane is open, middle lane is open, right hand lane is closed. Hence why you look at the images first and go from there. Well, I got one wrong. Well, I didn't get one wrong, I just clicked the wrong one because I was talking and trying to multitask, which I can't do too well, as you can see. Right, let me just go back to this. If you guys have got no questions. Yeah, I believe you. Don't worry, I trust you. Um, you guys got no question. I'm going to do a demonstration of a hazard perception because you guys are asking me for this. Let me know in the chat. Just write um, struggling if you guys are still struggling with your hazard perception. Just put in the chat struggling so I know who I'm trying to reach. So let me just quickly explain while I'm waiting for that. Um, has perception, 13, sorry, 14 videos, 13 of them have single hazards, score a maximum five. Um, and there's a double, which is going to score two fives. With the videos, it just runs and runs and runs. Once you click start, it runs until it finishes. Most videos on the real test last for 45 seconds to a minute. So you have to be alert. You just don't know which one um, is going to be the hazard in terms of that. So you're looking for anything that's going to call you to slow down or change direction. That's what you're looking for. Because if you're driving in that video in real life, you're checking the mirror. So if you're slowing down, it's the main mirror. If you're changing direction, it's the main mirror plus the equivalent wing mirror. That's what it's for. So you're clicking on anything that's going to call you to slow down or change direction. Right. So I've got a lot of struggles in there. Take care, Patricia. And I'll see you next week. Right, there's lots. That's not a problem. Um, I hope, I'm glad it's helping. Right. Got a lot of ones struggling in there. That's fine, it's not a problem. Right. Not a problem. So that's what you're looking for. Anything to call you to slow down or change direction. What you're going to do is when you see the problem, you're going to click twice. As weird as this is about to sound, as weird as this is about to sound, you're, you're not, it's not about you seeing the hazard, it's about you getting a score. Because you can see the hazard, click too early, you're going to get a zero. It's about you getting a score in the countdown window. That's what you're trying to do. Five goes down to zero you need to get between three and five. So you're going to click twice. So if the first click is too early, hopefully the second click lands in the a score. So you click, you go one, literally like this. You click one, two, and you click again. You do not go click, click, because the first one's too early, the second one's going to be too early. So you literally click, you go one, two, and then you click, click again. In the real test, they're all CGI, so it's a lot clearer, bigger screen, and it's slightly slower than the apps. 
So let me do a demonstration for you. So let me just pick up these comments because this is going crazy. Mostly struggling with clicking too early and being penalized quite. What do you mean by penalized? As in getting zero or literally saying you click too many times? Because you won't get penalized for clicking early, you're just going to get a zero. That's not penalized. If you click too many times, you're going to get penalized. It just wipes off your score and gives you a zero full stop. I once saw that was saying about the water on the road, right? Okay. When shouldn't you park? When you shouldn't park that wheel of strike property? A driveway. You got lay by area, driving uphill, C but you ain't got D on that. Sorry, yes, you have. Sorry, didn't see it. Obstructing property, you can't park in someone's drive in front of someone's driveway. No problem, fisherman. Let me know um, that you've joined Discord. And like I said, um, if you um, send me messages in there, um, I can answer that. There's admins in there as well who can do that as well. Answer any questions you have. Struggling with LGV has perception. Any recommended for online mock test? Yeah, the app. Change the questions. All you got to do with the four in one app, that's why I love it so much. If you are doing LGV, then change the, the questions. Not learner driver, change the LG driver. The questions will be related to um, lorries and the videos will be related to lorries. But the videos are videos, to be honest. See a problem, still click and changing it. But yeah, change the questions on the app. In settings. Yes, the hazard is easier than um, the questions and, and the theory. The reason being is 50 questions. You don't know what 50 questions you're going to get. A video is a video. A problem is a problem. It's not going to change from video to video. It's going to be a different problem on the videos, but the clicking is still the same. The questions, you don't know what questions you're going to get. Just in case you didn't know, because someone mentioned this this morning in the classroom, when you go into the room for the real test, you're all doing different questions. It's not the same test for everyone. The questions are ran random. So they, if there's 10 of you in the room, you're doing 10 different tests. And that's the reason why I say if you fail the, um, the theory test, you need to study the categories because you're going to get a different 50 questions but you're still gonna get the same categories, just a different question that category. So if that category is weak, chances are you're gonna fail again. All right, let me... So let me just read this. You're getting zero, but also when practicing on the DVLA safe drum for life seems to have a lower tolerance for clicking beyond eight clicks. Sometimes I've been given a zero for clicking too much. Yeah, because you're clicking on things that don't exist. If you haven't seen my video, um, on has a perception where you click too many times, click on things that don't exist, then go and watch that. The reason why you're getting a zero, if that's the case, you're clicking on things that don't exist. If you click on things that you have to slow down for or to change direction, it can't add up to too many. It definitely can't. You're just clicking on stuff, random stuff. But let me do a demonstration and then I can come back to that. So, iPad. So, it's not changed. Hold on one sec, let me set this up. There you go, hopefully you guys can see that now. So I just pick this one, CGI. So I do a commentary, I'm gonna tell you what I'm seeing and why I'm clicking and you see me click twice on this. So you always wanna look as far as your head, so you've got a triangle sign warning me of something. So what's it warning me of? The deer in the road. So there's no deers at this precise moment, so I don't need to click. So again, I'm looking ahead as far as I can see around the bend. Again, there's nothing for me to click because there's nothing that causes me to slow down at this point. There is a pedestrian on the left on the pavement, but there's a grass verge there. And again, still nothing to click on. Again, look in the distance, bike, one, two, and click again. So that's the one that's caused me to slow down. That's the one I should be getting marked on but you still keep watching because you don't know if it's a double.
Again, still looking in the distance, don't see anything constructive to be clicking on. Oh, roundabout, got to slow down for a roundabout. There you go. So four out of five. So let me just review it back so you guys can see it. Just fast forward that. And if I can pause it at the right time, because it gave me four out of five, so I'm assuming the first click was too early. I know it just jumped straight in. Right, so there's my second click, which looks like a two. They will always give you the highest mark. That's the reason why you click twice. So if I got a five, then a three, they're always gonna give me five. And that's why you click twice. So you just see the problem, you click, you go one, two, click again. Let me just catch, catch, uh, let me catch up on these comments. Let's see if there's anything else in there. It depends what you mean by various hazards, because technically it's always going to be one hazard at a time. The link is in the description of this video, um, this live, and it will be in the pinned comment. If you go, if you can't find it, go to last week's video, whatever last Thursday date was, and again it's in the description and it's in the pinned comment. My app is driving test success. Right, let me just do another one on this. So let me just get rid of that. Let me do a real life video clip, not CGI. One with no stars. Let's try this one. I've not seen this one before. So again, you're always scanning from left to right, right to left. That's the best way to do it like you're driving. And again, I don't see anything at this precise moment to click on. The van coming down is on my side of the road. Technically, I can't see around the bend. The, lo the van parked up on the pavement because I need to move to the right. Um, warnings, roadworks. And the car coming out to my left. So let me slow the buses on my side of the road as well, just over the white line. Oh, sorry about that. Let me do it again. That's me. Uh, so let me do that again. Hopefully you guys can see that now. It's just me not showing my screen. Sorry about that, guys. Right. Looking ahead from left to right, right to left. Right, so the van is on my side of the road, so obviously I need to reduce my speed. For those of you taking driving lessons, less space, less speed. The van's parked up on the pavement. Um, we've got triangles warning me of roadworks. And the car coming out from my left. It's telling me to slow down and the bus is partially over the line as well. Again, let me just fast forward that. Let's see which one it was. So it's warning me of the roadworks. So it's actually the car coming out. And there's my second click. So that's the simplest. That's, that's how it works. It's literally see the problem, click on the problem, one, two, and then click again. Hopefully that's helped some of you guys get better at this. Did you see the last one? Did you see this last one? I'm seeing the comments of can't see. That's previous one. I've sent you my scores and the areas I need help with, please. I really need to know how to join the Discord. It's in the description. It says click on invite. Where did you send this information to, Kate? So just let me know in the chat if you guys saw the last demonstration, otherwise I'll do another one. 
Just type yes. So you're approaching a roundabout and you have to slow down. Is that hazard? Yeah, roundabouts. Anything that's going to cause you to slow down. Anything that's going to cause you to slow down is a hazard because you have to slow down safely. If you don't slow down in the right manner, someone goes into the back of you. So roundabouts are hazard, junctions are hazard. So you need to click on that if necessary. Do I, do I need to click a minute after seeing the hazard or can I click when I reach near to the hazard? No, if you go near the hazard, it's gonna be a zero. Let me, let me do one more. Is if you if you get near the hazard, let me come out of this first and foremost. Let me try to explain this again. If you get near the hazard, you are going to get near a zero. You need to get three or more. Let me quickly explain. In real life driving, if you saw the hazard late, you're gonna go for the brakes first. There's nowhere on earth on the driving lesson you're gonna check your mirrors first. That's why the hazard perception was introduced. It's you checking your mirrors. So the earlier you see the problem, the earlier you got to check your mirrors, which means you now got five, six seconds in real life to deal with the problem. So the later you leave it, the worse it's gonna be for you. So on the video, as soon as you see the issue, you click and then you just count one, two, and go again. That's how it works. So hopefully that explains it. What about the videos with two hazards in one? Same thing, it's, you've seen, it's two separate problems. So you just keep clicking all the way through the video. Let me see if I can find a double one on there and just see what I'm talking about. There we go, let me do a double one and then sign off on that. Let me just see what you guys are saying. You're sending it to my email. Like I said, I'm not gonna be able to respond to my emails because I'm snowed under. Your best bet is to go to Discord and put it up in Discord if you want a big, a sooner response. But if you're doing the email, it's unlikely you're gonna get a response this week because I am literally snowed under with work. I'll flag it and try to respond, but it's unlikely it's gonna be this week. Quicker response is gonna be Discord. That's why it's set up. I am not sure what you mean by what would that come up on during the test? What are we talking about coming up? Yeah, it should work on your real test as well, Lee, because um, it's slower, it's slightly slower, and obviously you're doing it on a bigger screen. I don't know what you're doing, you may be doing it on your computer, but if you're doing it on a phone or tablet, it's a lot bigger screen when you're going for the real test, so you should get a higher score. How do you pass your multiple choice? That's gonna be studying. Passing the multiple choice. Right. J, no problem. Right, let me do the double one and then we go from there. So, let me get my screen now. This time, I'm make sure you can see it before I start. Oops, wrong one. iPad. Right. Get a comment off the screen. So, hopefully, you guys can see that because I can see on the monitor. Right, so. I'm scanning beyond the car. I'm not looking at the silver car in front of me. I'm looking beyond the car because that's where the problems are. So I'm scanning from left to right, right to left to look for any issues. So you've got the zigzags on the floor, suggest a zebra crossing, two. Oops, two. So that's the one that's caused me to slow down. That's the one I'm gonna get marked on. But remember, you wouldn't know which one's a double, so you just keep going. I know this is a double, but you would keep going in real life because you don't know which one will be the double. So again, you scan the road ahead, left to right, right to left. The car's over the white line. This car's over the white line. And the van's over, I think I messed that one completely, but there's no harm in clicking twice again, just to make sure you get a score. Because remember, it's all about getting a score. See, there you go, five on the first one, two on the second one, because I messed it up completely. But remember, let me come out of that and I'll come back to it. 
you are trying to get at least a three on every clip. So even though that's out of 10, I'm still averaging above three because I got seven. If I got a five or a four, that brings my average down. So as much as I messed up on the second click, my average is still above three, I'm still in the game. Ideally, you want an eight or nine on your double to be fair to bring the average up. But like I said, with that, I would still be passing as long as I'm averaging three. But anyway, let me go back to it and I'll show you with the review. Again, to speed that up. Right, that's a prime example. Let me pause it there. Hopefully you guys can see that. That's where I clicked on the first one. That's a zero. Can you, you can't see the marks on this. Let me just change this camera angle. Hold on one second. Do, do, do. Seems locked. Hold on one second. I'm going to change that so you can see the clicks. Unlock that. Right, can you guys see that, the clicks? Again, just type, someone type yes, so I know that you can see that. Jay, thank you. It's for two in one hazard that catches me out. So I was wondering if it will come up in the... Yes, there's always going to be one video that's a double, just a one. So like I said, there's 14 videos, 13 of them are single hazards and one of them's a double. So you're always going to get a double. It's just a case of when will it come up. You don't know. That's why you keep clicking. So you guys can see that. So let me just go back a bit. That's my first click. Too early. So if I leave it there, I've seen it. Not a problem because the flag's there, the hazard's there. But like I said, it's not about you seeing the hazard. It's about you getting a score. That's the important bit. That's why you click twice. So again, watch this. That's the first click. One, two, and there's my second click. Well, late, but there's my second click. That's why you click twice, just to cover your back, just in case you was too early. I stress again. It's about you guys getting a score, not whether you see it or not. It's no point seeing it like I did there and getting a zero. That's pointless. You're trying to get a score. So hopefully that helps you out. I'll just show you the second one. And the reason why this is what it was, because the car is over the white line. He's coming onto my side of the road. When someone's on your side of the road or the space gets tight, you have to reduce your speed. Less space, less speed, but you have to check your mirrors first to know it's safe to slow down. And that's the reason why the hazard is what it is on this one. So hopefully that makes a bit more sense and helps you guys out. Right, is there any other questions that you guys want to ask? If there's no questions, then I'm going to wish you guys who've got a test coming up this week, driving or ferry, good luck with it. And for those of you, I will hopefully see you next Monday. But if you haven't already, let me just say one last time, if you haven't already, come and join us in the community in Discord. You can get your questions asked. There will be live training moving forwards, just not this week because I am busy with work, but next week I will definitely be in there and I'm gonna to try to do a live training session on documents. But for those of you that's in there, you will be notified. Anything I do, I'll notify all of you. And if you're around, just jump in there and we can have that um, training together. But you can ask your questions in there. That's the best place to be. If you're sending me emails, I will get around to it, but it's going to be eventually at this point in time. Want access quicker? Join Discord. It's in the description. It will be in the pinned comment after YouTube do what they got to do with this and process it. But other, but other than that, I will see you guys next week. And thank you guys for all thanking me and wishing me 
good luck with everything. I don't thank you. I passed my very test after watching you for three days before I almost cancelled my test. I was struggling, but you explained so well. Not to sure got four. Yeah, four. Yeah, fifty. Really high score and fifty-five. Well done to you, Max, and thank you for coming and letting me know. Um. So I wish you guys a good, safe week. If not, I'll catch you in Discord. If not, next Monday on the next live. Thanks for coming. Bye.